Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. We are here for section 2.5, Similar Figures. Our essential question is, how can you determine if two figures are similar? Today, you're going to need a pen or a pencil. You might even find highlighters helpful today. Your Jaguar dots on section 2.5, and you need to bring your perseverance and your self-confidence. So let's begin in your Jaguar dots on section 2.5, and we're going to need to actually talk about even what the difference and what is similar figures and how do similar figures differ from congruent figures. When we look at them, what we're looking at their shape and their size. When we talk about shape, what we're talking about is their angles. And in a congruent figure, the angles are exactly the same. And we're going to use the symbol, the tilde symbol to indicate that they're the same. And in similar figures, they are also the same. So we're going to use the same thing, the tilde, to talk about that. But where things get a little bit different is when we are talking about the size. When we're talking about the size in congruent figures, we're talking about the sides. And specifically, we're going to talk about the ratios of the sides. So two figures, we're going to talk about comparing the ratio of side A to side A in the figures. And when we are looking at congruent figures, they are the same. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. And if you go back, we call this the scale factor. And so they are equal. When they are similar, they're proportional or they're different. So they're going to be different sides, but it's important that we remember that they are proportional. And the scale factor is A to B. Whatever it is, a three to four ratio, a one to two ratio, two to one ratio, maybe it's twice as big, three times as big, half the size, something like that. So we don't have a symbol for that. So that's where we get into the symbols. So for congruent figures, we combine the two. And when we talk about congruent figures, we use this symbol. We use the equal symbol saying that they're the same size, and we use the tilde to say that they're the same shape. When we talk about similar figures, we just say that they're the same shape, and so we just use the tilde. It is important for us to note that congruent figures are also similar because they do have a scale factor. Their scale factor just happens to be one to one. So let's go ahead now and dive into this. Let's look at two figures right here. When we look at these two figures, we can see that these two figures, this one is bigger than this one right here, but they do have some things about them that we can say that are the same. For example, if I look right here at angle A, it has one, two, three swoop marks in it. So those swoop marks are how we say that angles are congruent. You might want to jot that down on your piece of paper. So the swoop marks is how we are saying that they are congruent angles. So if I look right here, I can tell you right here that angle D also has the same three swoop marks. So I can say that angle A is congruent to angle D. That little mark, that little almost looks like a less than sign means angle. Sometimes you'll see somebody put a little like swoop in the mark. That's so that it doesn't look like an L. So be familiar with both of those. So if I was to look at this and now I look at angle B, which one has the swoop marks? This one has two. If I look over here, E also has two. So I would say it is congruent. So I'm gonna use the congruent side because they are equal. So angle B is equal or congruent to angle E. So anytime we're talking about shapes, we use that congruent symbol. And then I look here at the last one, angle C has only one. And over here, angle F only has one. So angle C is congruent to angle F. So this is telling us that they have the same shape. So because all of the angles are the same, we can come back here, all of the angles are the same, we can say that it has the same shape. So let's go ahead and put what we just talked about into words. So the corresponding angles are congruent, therefore the triangles are similar. So the corresponding means they matched up. 
So when I say, I say corresponding, it means they're in the same place. So we might need to define corresponding. If I need, if you need to define corresponding, you need to pause the video and you need to write that down. Corresponding means that they are in the same place. So since we know that the corresponding angles are congruent, therefore the triangles are similar, we can now make another inference. Because they're similar, then what do we know about the sides? Come back up here. Because they are similar, what else do we know about the sides? We know that the sides are proportional. So this table is going to help us make some inferences. So since the sides are similar, we know that the side lengths are proportional. And this is where the fun of similar triangles comes in. Knowing this, we can now, once we have numbers, we can try to figure out missing side lengths. So now let's look at the picture. We're going to match corresponding sides. So if we are to look at, and this is where the highlighters might be really helpful. Let's look at side AB. AB goes from three swoops to two swoops and A to B. So what corresponded to A? D did. What corresponded to B? E did. So we're going to go corresponding part to corresponding part. So A corresponded to D and B corresponded to E. So we're going to go, do, go that same exact length, which means side AB corresponds to side DE because they're in the same place. They have the angles that match up as those endpoints. So we're going to say small to big. We're going to go from the small triangle to the big triangle on every single one of these. So A is to B as what? D is to E. So now let's go find the next one. Let's look at B to C. So B is to C. And I want you to pause this and see if you can find out what this is. B is to C as what? Good. It went from B, what corresponds to B? E. What corresponds to C? F. So as E is to F. B went to E and C went to F. Now we're going to do this last one a little bit differently because it's so cool how it works out. We now know all those corresponding parts, right? So here's another fun way or different way to look at it. What corresponded to F? F corresponded to C. So we're going to put right above F, we're going to put the C because they correspond. What corresponded to D? Come back up here. A corresponded to D. And we found our side just by writing in those corresponding parts. So we're saying FD and CA are corresponding sides. Now let's go check it out. F to D. Was this side right here? Is the corresponding side CA or AC? Remember, you can go in either order. Are the endpoints of this one C and A? They are. So that's another way you can find those corresponding sides is literally by looking at this right here and just matching them up. Look, A went to D and B went to E. I had B, so underneath it I put E, and C, so underneath it I put F. So that's another way you can find those corresponding parts. That's very straightforward. So now that we know that we have all these similar pieces, we're going to actually write a similarity statement. That's what this is called is a similarity statement. And what we're going to do is we're going to match up those pieces again. So this is saying triangle ABC is similar to triangle what? Again, we're going to match up those pieces. So what went to A? Again, you can either look here at the triangle, or you can look at this, what we wrote down, but you're going to find those pieces. So what corresponded to A? D. So since A is in the first place, then D has to be in the first place. But what we need to put here before we even start is we need to make sure we put what we're talking about, which is a triangle. So put the triangle simple, and now we can write D. So A and D both have to be in the first slot. Then comes B. So what is in slot B? is E because B and E are corresponding because they are congruent and they're in the same spot of the triangle. They are in the corresponding place. 
And then what follows, so this, they're in the second spot and the second spot. And then what follows is C. So C is corresponding to F and you can see that here as well. So that is F. So this is saying triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. So that's how you would actually say it. You might want to jot that down so that you remember that the little tilde means is similar. Whew, that was a lot of information in a very short amount of time about what similarity means. So why do you think it's important for us to pay attention to those corresponding parts? Do you think that we always have to write it in the corresponding way? And the answer is yes, because if we don't write them in those corresponding places, then we end up with things that are not similar. The corresponding parts tell us where they're similar so that we know, hey, this piece goes with this piece and this piece goes with this piece and we know exactly what goes together. So what I want you to think about tonight as we kind of close this up is what would happen if I didn't put things in the corresponding places? Why, what would happen if I just kind of put them wherever I wanted to put them? All right. And kind of think about that. What would happen if I didn't do things in the right way? Thank you so much for joining us. And I want you to remember to be kind to one another because we can always use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.